Israel as busy as ever, barely able to just keep an eye on everything that's happening there. Again, join us on Telegram if you want to stay up to date on an hourly, half an hourly basis as things happen, because that's as much as happening there. There's just so much news coming out of Israel. It is crazy. So I'm going to touch on just a few of the little things that have come out that are of note. Um, six Al Jazeera journalists were exposed as Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists. When will Washington take action? At 5 p.m. Israel time on Wednesday this week, the spokesperson for Israel's defense forces released damning new documents that were recently discovered in the Gaza Strip. The documents, all in Arabic, exposed six so-called journalists working for the Al Jazeera satellite TV network as simultaneously working for Hamas and the Islamic Jihad organizations in Gaza. The documents include personnel tables, lists of terrorist training courses, phone directories, salary documents, and so on for the terrorists. Their force numbers, exactly what their positions were in the military, where they served, years, all those things. And still, Israel now goes and shoots one of these journalists. The whole world's up in arms that Israel's killing innocent journalists or innocent UN or UNRWA people when they're actually having dual status as active members of terrorist organizations. And the proof is always provided. The IDF's always been transparent with this, and they've shown all the documents that they have found for people to look at, translate themselves, and see exactly what's going on. Does the world want the truth? No, because we're living in a time of deception and lies, and the narrative the enemy is pushing right now is the destruction and elimination of Israel, and no matter how hard Israel gets hit, Israel is in the wrong. That's what the world needs to believe and is believing at the moment. Um, they curse Hamas. Gaza residents report Hamas attacks them when they try to evacuate. IDF Arabic spokesman posts video of Gazans condemning Hamas. So now here's videos of actual Gazans in the field being treated by the IDF after they were attacked by Hamas and saying what they think of Hamas and what Hamas is doing. So it's them talking, not the Jews. Still the world won't believe it. Several civilians approached the IDF for medical treatment, claiming they were injured by Hamas terrorists who tried to stop them evacuating. They need civilian shields. In the video, one resident described how Hamas terrorists beat them to prevent them from leaving Jabalia, adding, we don't want Hamas. Hamas is killing us. Another Jabalia resident cursed Hamas. God burn Hamas. They've killed us. Another one is say, saying Hamas is the one who did this and it is the one that destroyed Gaza. They told us that whoever wants to leave his house, we will kill him. Hamas must be executed. The whole nation does not want Hamas. And yet the world presents it that the whole nation wants the destruction of Israel. The whole nation is against Israel and with Hamas, that it is a valid fight for liberation against the occupiers, the Jews. When that's not the case at all. Again, lies and deception. Iran unveils no hostage will be released. Blood splattered mural in Tehran. So all along the side of the skyscraper building, they've got pictures of all the hostages, blood splattered. And in Hebrew, no hostage will be released to taunt the Jews and the families of those hostages that are still being kept in those areas. The mural was put up in Tehran's Palestine Square on Tuesday, according to the Tehran Times. Among the photos, though, of the hostages is Noah Argamani, who, despite Tehran's caption on the mural, was freed by the IDF soldiers in an operation in June, along with three other hostages. Former Israeli hostage negotiator Gershon Baskin, who worked towards the release of Gilad Shalit in 2011, told the Telegraph that Sinwar's death could mean a moment of doom because there are rumors that Sinwar instructed people holding hostages that should he be killed, they should kill their hostages. So that's a real concern. How many of those would have followed through on that and killed the hostages because that was Sinwar's standing command if something should happen to him? That's why the IDF and Israel are now offering massive monetary rewards and safe leaving ways 
to get out of Gaza and go to another country into exile if those people hand over the hostages. So they're trying to prevent the solution by giving them a monetary solution and an escape to get away. Which one will be taken? We have yet to see in the days ahead. Senior Hamas official arrives in Moscow to meet Russian officials. Masu Abu Marzuk arrived in Moscow on a planned visit. Russian state-run news agency RAI reported on Wednesday. Hamas Politburo member Abu Marzuk intends to hold a series of meetings with Russian officials without providing any further details right now. Russia has ties to all key players in the Middle East, including Israel, Iran, Lebanon, and the Palestinian Authority, and Hamas. And I'm sure Hezbollah and Islamic Jihad and everybody else who's willing to fight and stand against Israel and the Jews. And this is not a surprising thing. It's not the first time Hamas has been there. They were there shortly after the October 7th thing as well, talking, and now they're talking again. What surprises me is that there's still Russian hostages. Why have they not been released if you're so chummy chummy with Russia? Is it because they're actually Jewish Russian hostages and it's not a priority for Putin? British Airways has suspended flights to Israel until March 2025. British Airways said it's suspending the flights to Tel Aviv until the end of March next year amidst heightened fighting between Israel and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon and tensions rising in the Middle East. This will give greater certainty to our customers who we're contacting to advise of their options, including a full refund. An array of foreign airlines have recently extended their flight cancellations to Israel. Low-cost airline Wizz Air nixed all its flights to and from Israel until January 15. And Delta Airlines said it was extending the cancellation of all routes to Israel till the end of March 2025. So everybody holding their breath, waiting for the final next escalation between Israel and Iran, which would have taken place already, I think, if not for the leaked documents that America released to Iran so that they know what's coming. So now Israel is pivoting. The leadership's having constant meetings. They say they're ready. They are the, I think Netanyahu called it. There's going to be an earthquake in Iran that everyone will notice. It's going to be huge. So there is something massive coming in the days ahead the feasts are behind them so there's nothing holding them back or keeping them distracted or focused on anything else they are laser focused on getting that punch to iran as soon as possible i would think we would see this go down in the next week or two and i don't think it'll be the only punch i think it'll be a one two punch the first one's going to land and as they're trying to recover from that or maybe retaliate the second one will probably come in from the left field but again just my opinion. Nothing's holding them back. No feasts have got them tied up. Nothing else that they're busy with except for focusing on getting this job done. Keep praying for Israel. Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for scales to fall from their eyes, hearts of stone to become hearts of flesh. For everybody in the Middle East to have God experiences and that Jesus will be revealed to them as the Messiah. And that they can turn their lives around while there is still time. Shalom.